everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to break Wilton's Violet Icing Color on some of Wool to Die For's Donical yarn that has white depths. I am so curious to see how these nets will pop against this beautiful purple pink to blue gradient that we get from breaking this awesome food coloring, which is a bit of a signature of mine. Now, because all of the ingredients we are using today are food safe. I am personally comfortable using my cooking pots and pans to dye yarn with food coloring in my kitchen. To dye yarn with food coloring, you need to make sure that you pick the right kind of yarn base. This Donegal White Nep yarn is mostly superwash wool, which is a great candidate for dyeing with food coloring. You need that protein-based yarn, wool, alpaca, silk, mohair. If it's an animal fiber, it's going to work well. Unfortunately, this doesn't work as well on cottons or synthetics like acrylic and polyester. And after that, you need your artificial food coloring. The Wilton's Violet has blue one and red three in it. You need acid, which we will use from our white vinegar. And then you need heat. And when you combine all those components together, you dye yarn. This fun yarn is 84% superwash merino, 16% cotton acrylic nap. And the way that we get the white speckles, essentially, is that the cotton acrylic can't be dyed with acid dyes, and that includes food coloring. Although we may see some staining on the cotton, it certainly will not pick up as much pigment as the merino wool, and so we should really then see more contrast between the neps and the bare yarn once we dye it. Because right now, looking at the yarn, you maybe can barely see some of the neps, but there is currently no contrast between the neps and the yarn itself. I did go ahead and pre-soak this yarn in plain tap water for a couple of hours, so it is nice and saturated and ready for us to dip dye. I also added on a removable nylon zip tie that has only been used for food-based projects. To prepare our dye, I am going to measure out a half teaspoon of the Wilton's Violet icing color and dissolve this into half a cup of warm tap water. There is no acid in here yet and that is because uh, I have found that having acid with red three, one of the pigments in this Wilton's Violet food coloring, uh, if you have it in contact with acid too soon, the red will all crash out and you'll end up with a film on the surface of your pot. So if you want those pinks to get on the yarn, then I recommend putting the dye in contact with acid as close to when you're actually going to start dip dyeing as possible. And the reason why I use warm tap water is it just makes it easier for the gel to dissolve, otherwise it will remain clumped on your spoon for a little while. But this is a proportion that many years ago I investigated and so I like this ratio of a half teaspoon of icing color to 100 grams of yarn, but obviously that depends on the color. For black, I might use a quarter teaspoon and for uh, something paler, I might pump up the volume a little bit more. What is color breaking? Color breaking is when you have a mixture of different dye molecules and then they bind to your yarn or whatever it is you're dyeing at different rates and separate into different colored hues. So in the case of Wilton's Violet, we'll see it separate in the pinks and the blues because those red threes strike really fast and the blue number one takes a lot more time, needs more heat and acid. And because of that, we can exaggerate this separation, getting a multicolored variegated yarn from just one color. There are many different ways that you can play around with this, uh, and it's really fun to take advantage of color breaking to create some stunning colorways. And that's something I love to do a lot here on this channel. So please make sure you are subscribed, to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and give the video a thumbs up and let's go play with some yarn. In this stainless steel pot, I have eight cups of water and we are going to add one tablespoon of white vinegar. 
This is a ratio that I find works really well uh, for Wilton's Violet to break so we can see both the pinks and get some of those blues left behind. If we start with say two tablespoons of white vinegar, the blues will typically will start striking onto our super wash yarn, which means that uh, we might see maybe a pastel blue at the end, but the breaking won't be as dramatic as it can be. Now I have my pre-soaked skein of yarn ready to go. So that way, as I add the Wilton's Violet food coloring to the pot, give it a bit of a stir, then I can come in and immediately start dip dyeing into the pot. And you can see as I raise and lower it that those pinks strike really fast. And sometimes like you can see a little bit of a blue, like right there you see it's a little bit more blue already, but there are still pinks in the pot. And actually, you can also see some pink around the rim, and that is some of that red three crashing out, even with giving it the yarn to bind to right away. And as I go, each time I raise this up, I sort of look and see, I might have gone a little too fast, I look and see how many reds are striking onto the yarn, as I'm going down and up. And it does actually look like some of those reds are binding <laughs> to our cotton, um, which is fun. And there's still a fair amount of color in there. Okay, but that's looking pretty blue. Sometimes I go all the way in too fast and our final blue ends up being rather purple. But actually, I feel like we're probably pretty good here. But you can see how fairly dramatically we have um, all of the these purples and then this blue left and that's just because the rate that these different colors bind to the yarn are so different. So now I am actually let's go ahead at this stage there's no harm in adding more acid right now since everything is now in the pot and I am going to set a timer there's not a ton left. I'm gonna set a timer, by ton left, I mean there's not a ton of color left, just a little bit of blue. I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check on the yarn. All right, it's been 10 minutes, aha, here's the zip tie. And let's see, that is looking pretty clear. I would say that this isn't the brightest, most dramatic version of breaking I've done, but you do have the purples and a nice blue. I think no, I think it's really cool over here how we see those pinks in the naps. Yeah, that's really exciting and the staining is fun. Like I, I think that that's really cool. I'm curious about how much of that will stick around once we go ahead and wash this uh, because it's possible that some of that staining will come out. But like when I tried to dye cotton yarn with Kool-Aid, uh, there's still like a very pale pink left in that untreated cotton yarn that uh, to this day like would probably still bleed more if I was going to wash it again. But anyway, I am going to leave the yarn in here on low heat for another 15 minutes. Then I will turn off the heat remove the yarn and let it cool completely so we can wash it. It is the next morning and, well the dye bath was clear last night. I would say this is not one of the most extreme examples of broken violet I have ever done, um, but I think that it's really pretty. So now let's go wash it. And you can see around the edge that little bit of a pink halo from where some of that red number three crashed out of solution. It will stain, so um, you usually don't want to rub your yarn against the edges of the pot. It can be harder on superwash yarn to get a good red to blue color, but I'm actually really surprised that this feels, so, that the end feels so lavender. That's not how it looked last night. So I'm a tad bit perplexed, not concerned though. 
We could always give it another shot, but I'm now washing it in some cool tap water with dish soap, and we are seeing some reds come out, which is also not something I often see with the, well, oh, you know why? Oh, that's probably because, like, the net um, soaked up some color and that's not coming out. I was like, normally if I see bleeding with food coloring, it's blue, not pink. But I imagine that we're seeing it because some of that pink that we see on these nets, and that's sort of what we see coming out. Oh, I was like, this is different. Um, because don't forget that in addition to the nets, some of this color is, or some of this fiber content is all throughout the yarn. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little more just clear dish soap to this, and I'm gonna fill up this basin and let it soak for, I think, about 10 minutes. There isn't like a ton of color bleeding out that is a concern to me, but I figure why not give it a nice and good soak. All right. This is so weird to me. I like, I'm seriously not used to seeing this much bleeding. Except for whenever I've tried to dye cotton with food coloring. I'm now trying to remember if I've had bleeding issues. And I honestly can't remember if I had bleeding issues on this when I dyed it with acid dyes. Um, because one I did in the live stream that was pretty saturated, but I washed that one off camera. And then the other one was the, I forget what number. I have no idea. Okay, it is getting better. I am going to rinse this a few more times and then I'll come back and check in. A few rinses later and it is now looking clear to me. What I am no longer seeing though are the blues. It feels like, and there's a bit of sun, but it feels like the blues have disappeared a little bit in here which I definitely saw it in the pot, so I'm not really sure. Uh, <laughs> but I'm anyway, now gonna put this through my spin dryer and then hang it up to dry. One of the reasons why I'm so perplexed is that I often use Breaking Wilton's Violet as a little bit of a litmus test and use it to get a feel for how different yarn bases work. It's a favorite technique of mine. And so when it doesn't quite work out, I get a little confused. <laughs> Uh, but I know that it did look like it broke and so I don't know why we're not seeing as many of those blues now It didn't seem like the blues were coming out, but Anyway, uh, we will uh, See what the yarn looks like once it's dry. You know, I was nervous that I didn't capture the blues But I did it's just fairly subtle uh, Not quite as, as extreme as what I've seen in the past with stroll at times but I think it turned out really beautiful. Down at the deepest end, the nets still feel pale pink. Uh, if you think back to, well, actually I don't know if that showed up, but I had a skein of yarn that I tried to dye in Kool-Aid as a control, and it still, <laughs> to this day, if I try to wash it again, it will bleed more pink, but it does maintain a hint, a hair of some pink. It does look very, very pale um, in contrast with the purple down there, but it is much more pink than it is white. I have more plans for this yarn base, including a side-by-side -side comparison of this white nut base with, say, Stroll or something else, so that way I could see what kind of color differences there are. Uh, because I have a feeling that with this cotton and acrylic running through it a bit, it does make colors feel a bit more muted than they might otherwise feel. Here, I think you could see the pink a little bit better when it's twisted. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you want to see me play with Wilton's Violet food coloring on more yarn bases, leave a comment down below. I always worry that people might get tired of seeing me play with Breaking Violet, but uh, I love it, and it's one of my first like favorite things about dyeing yarn, and so it's fun to see how different bases like 
interact with this technique and the variation. It really is a nice litmus test to compare different types of yarn. Please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, give the video a like, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. There are always new episodes every Tuesday and Friday mornings, and, well, I love to play with all types of yarn and all kinds of dyes! Thank you so much for watching!